Oh, we're live? Yeah. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello, my artists. Welcome to the Ziegler Art Museum Spotlight Series. Um, it is July 30th, um, and we're just going to do a little talking while we wait for some people to join us. So this week's spotlight piece is Portrait of a Young Girl with a Rose. Um, this is by Julian Hudson. And Julian Hudson was born on January 9th in 19, I mean, excuse me, 1811. Um, and he was born in New Orleans. So, and he passed away in 1844. So we only had him for a short amount of time. Um, but we, we're very lucky to have one of his pieces here at the museum. Um, we'd love for you guys to come down and see it whenever you feel like you can. So today I was inspired by this piece, by the flower. This pink really draws my eye there. You notice it's the only pink on the page and it really draws my eye in. And I love flowers. So this week we are gonna do flowers inspired by our beautiful girl here holding her pink rose. So when I think of flowers and art, the name that pops up first in my mind is Georgia O'Keeffe. This is a famous, famous American artist um, who's most well known for her large flowers. Um, she was also well known for her New Mexican landscapes and actually her New York cityscapes too. She spent a lot of time in New York. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about Georgia. She's one of my all time favorite artists. Um, and you can kind of see why. This is her, this is an American poppy. Oh, I'm so sorry, I lost my stuff. So Georgia was born in 1887 in Wisconsin and she passed away in 1986 in Santa Fe. Um, so she was known, like I said, for her paintings of these enlarged flowers. Um, and she's also recognized as the mother of American modernism, which is just some fancy work for saying she's one of the most famous and one of the earliest women painters. Um, so I found one, of, one quote from her that I wanna tell you guys that I just loved. So this is Georgia O'Keeffe, she says, I found I could say things with color and shapes that I couldn't say any other way. Things I had no words for. And I love that because I feel like that really expresses what art is to me. So um, this is her American Poppy. What I want you to notice is, one, look at how close we are to it. So today we're going to, in our minds, we're gonna shrink ourselves way down into a little tiny insect, okay? So has everybody shrunk down to be an insect? All right. We want to kind of look at the flower as the insect would see it. And if you notice here, her, her petals actually go off of the page right here. And we're gonna do that today, which is why it's important to have a table covering, okay? We'll go over our supplies in a second. Here's another one by Georgia. Uh, oops, I think I had that upside down, there we go. Just another, some more flowers. You can see how close up you are to it and how, again, the petals, they go right off the page. They're right big, right there in your face. Um, so they're super fun. So there's this one again, this is the American Poppy. This is probably one of her most famous images. Um, the US Post Office actually made this into a 32 cent stamp, back when stamps were only two, 32 cents, um, which I think is pretty interesting. So, all right, while we wait for a few more, let's talk about our supplies. First thing is, oh, it's just my hand right now. Hold on guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> is a piece of paper. Now the supply list said watercolor paper or heavyweight paper. Um, I'm gonna assume that most of us today, especially for this age group, this is for my um, like five to nine, you probably not have watercolor paper. You probably have this heavy duty paper. Um, if you are lucky enough to have water paper, I'll talk to you kind of as we go as to what might be a little different with your paper. Because watercolor paper and heavyweight paper, they all soak in water differently. Um, but I'm guessing we're all using this kind of paper today. Okay, um, I'm using oil pastels. These are what in our classroom we call uh, fancy crayons. I absolutely love these. If you don't have oil pastels, do not worry. Crayons will work just fine with this project. In fact, if you see these two right here, I actually did both of these with crayons, not with oil pastel. So either one, whichever one you have or whichever one you want to use today is fine. My water bowl, okay? Once again, I'm gonna tell you guys this every time I use it. This is my favorite art trick. Parents, pay attention real quick. This is a, a dog bowl, it's a two-sided dog bowl, but it's super sturdy and it gives me a place where I can wipe off my dirty brush and pick up clean water for painting. It's so important to be able to keep your water clean when you're watercolor painting. Um, dirty water is gonna make your colors all muddy. 
I have this palette here. Some of your palettes might look different. You might not have as many colors. You might have more colors. That's okay. You can see how well loved this one is. We use it a lot. We're running really low on that blue. Um, and that's pretty much what we need today. So what do we got, Bailey? Oh, we want do we to have some about, people listening? Yeah, we have a couple. We also want to talk about our drawing. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so every week we do our drawing. Um, last week we had Jade was our winner. Her, it was her nephew. Mm -hmm. um, super excited. So Jade should have all the supplies that we need for this They're project. Because we gave, them, we gave them a brush. We gave them a bowl. Um, they got a, a watercolor painting. And they got some oil pastels. So they have everything. They're set. Yeah. Um, and we also want to hear a thumbs up from everyone watching. Yes. Anybody watching right now, give us a thumbs up. Let us know you're here. Share um, it with your friends. Share this with your friends. We'd love, we'd love more people to be watching and, and to be um, painting along with us. Remember, let us... Well, I, I can't wait to see all your finished flowers when we're done. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you can, you can comment some questions to us. You can like, share our post. Um, you we'll can read share them out live if you want to share anything with us. Oh, absolutely. We'll read out the posts. Um, if you, if you don't, if you just, if you're inspired to do a different type and you don't do the same project I'm doing right now, absolutely just share it anyway. Get yourself in that drawing so you can get some, um, awesome supplies. Um, again, before we get started, I do want to thank our sponsors, the museum sponsors. Um, you guys, without them, we wouldn't be able to put on any of our programming. And that includes the exhibits that we have at the museum and the classes that we hold when it's not COVID time. Mm -hmm. um, and it includes this series right here. So let's give a shout out to Home Bank, um, Safe, Haven. Safe Haven Enterprises, Bubba Oslet, and Mr. Richard Boyster. We really appreciate you guys um, so much on our 50th anniversary year. So here is the picture of the project we're doing today. And if you notice, this the one I the one I did yesterday. It's actually on a smaller piece of paper. If you notice, these two are square, and then I actually have another one over here on an even different size paper. This was done on watercolor paper. That's why it's super thick. Um, so my point was to show you guys that it's okay. It doesn't matter what size or shape of piece of paper you have. This project works on any of them, um, and I'm super excited. So, how are we doing? Is it almost time to get started? A few people watching. A few people watching. All right. Yeah, we're probably ready to go. I think we're ready to get started. Okay. So, your piece of paper. You get to decide today whether you want your paper to be landscape, the way I have it right now, or portrait, how we do it up and down like this. This is the portrait side. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do my landscape today. Um, but again, it's totally up to you. So the first thing we have to decide is what color are we gonna start with? And this is the color that's gonna be the outline of our flower, okay? I think, I think I'm gonna do blue today, my brand new blue one, I'm super lucky. So, we're gonna start with the center of our flower. Some of you might be really nervous about drawing a perfect circle, and here's a trick for you. Purposefully, don't make it a perfect, perfect circle, okay? So look at this. This still looks like the inside of a flower, but I made a little wavy lines there. This one also, this is a great example here, where it doesn't have to be a complete circle. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna decide, I'm gonna go ahead and put mine right in the center of my page, but if you wanna move it off to the side, you can do that. I want it to be pretty big, about the size of my fist, okay? So, cause we're real close. Remember, we're tiny little insects looking at these, these flowers really close. And I'm just gonna make a big, roundish shape just like that super easy right i don't mind it's not a perfect circle there are not a lot of flowers out there with perfect circles okay next step we're gonna make just little lines coming out just little lines about like that a few inches apart you're almost gonna make your little circle shape look like a sun huh just keep going all the way around Make them as even as possible, but it's okay if some of them are farther apart or closer together. It's just gonna give your flower some interest. All right, so we have lines all the way, so we, now we have our flower looking thing. So now I'm gonna move everything out of my way because when we're drawing, I'm going to pretend like my paper is huge and I'm just gonna draw all the way off the page, okay? 
So I'm gonna start, This is these little lines are a great little cheat on how to start and end your petal. So I'm gonna start with this one and I'm gonna go up and around and I'm gonna do a really simple petal, okay? Just a simple rounded petal. I'm gonna go up, it gets a little wider at the top and I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna join back into that line. But do you see how I drew right off the paper? Draw a line off the paper. All right, let's do it one more time. I'm gonna start here and go up and around and meet back at that line, okay? You can, now, if you have some lines that are close together like this, I'm gonna show you a trick to make it look like it's overlapping. Instead of starting down here at my little line, I'm gonna come up here and say, okay, I'm gonna start here and go up and around. And now it looks like this petal is slightly underneath that petal. And when we play with our paints, we're gonna make that look even more like that. Let's do that one more time. Well, let's go ahead and start down here, all the way off. And oh, this one is be perfect. So I'm gonna start it up here so it's overlapping. I'll go all the way off my paper, come back around. Oh, there we go. It's starting to look like a flower. I'm gonna start here. And this one's gonna end, is also gonna overlap. All right, keep going. All the way off the side. All of my petals made it off the side this time. All right, so if you wanna move your paper, you can, but I wanted to show you guys. Uh, sometimes it's easier to tw twist your paper. Did you see how I started that one? All right, and this, my last one, I'm gonna have it overlap way up here. All right, look at that, it looks like a big flower. But really, you really don't know what your flower looks like until you pick it up off the paper. I'm gonna pick it up. So there is our close-up flower. And I know it looks like a lot of lines right now, but we're gonna work on that, all right? So, good job. Now it's time to paint. So we can put our oil pastels to the side. Um, and let, oh, I forgot to tell you guys, if you want to do some texture or maybe even a pattern, I don't know if you saw in this flower, I did a little checkered pattern. And in this flower, I have little dots and things. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the dots. And I'm gonna do that now because I'm using my oil pastel and my watercolors will, do, will resist the oil pastel. And we'll show you that. So I'm gonna add a little texture here. Some dots because Jessica likes dots. All right, now I'm ready to put my oil pastels away. So now it's time to paint. Um, today I want us to practice a little bit about getting some some dimension in different um, with different colors. Okay, so when you think about the color of your flower, this flower right here is kind of an orangey. But if you can look, there's actually a reddish orange on this side and a lighter bright orange on this side, okay? So what I want us to do is I want us to find two friends on the color wheel. Let me grab that color wheel for you guys. And when I talk about colors that are friends, those are colors that are close to each other, right? They're very similar to each other. So we've got this orange yellow and the yellow. We've got this purple and this red purple. Um, so these are friendly colors is what I call them. So I think, I think I'm gonna do almost a, I think, maybe some purples. I think we'll go ahead with the purples today. Okay, so I wanna find two different purples to work with. Can you guys see this here? I have a really dark purple right here and a lighter purple right here. So those are the two colors I'm going to use. So right now, I'm gonna wake up my colors. And, okay, and you know, that means just picking up some water, brushing it around your color, and you're just waking that color up. And now I'm gonna wipe my brush off Pick up some clean water and wake up my other color. Wake up colors. That one's nice and dark, that purple. And I'm gonna wipe it off. So now both of my colors are awake and they're ready for me to use. So I'm gonna start with my lightest color and I'm gonna pick one side of a petal. I'm gonna start with this petal up here. And I'm gonna start this light color with a lot of water and a lot of color. Okay, don't be afraid of water. And I'm gonna start to paint it on there. Now remember, your oil pastel is gonna hold your color on your in you, inside your petal, petal really well. But if you're if you're not careful, it will start to come off. So now while it's still wet, I'm gonna wipe it off real quick, pick up lots of water. We kind of have to move fast because so, it stays wet. Because if you put wet on wet, you'll notice that the colors start to blend together. And sometimes, now that's a really harsh line. When I say that, I mean you can really tell the difference of the colors, right? So to change that, I'm gonna wipe my, paint, my brush off I'm gonna pick up just clean water. So there's no color on my brush, just water. 
And now I'm just gonna kind of brush that edge. And can you see how soft that got? So there's no longer that sharp line between the two colors, okay? All right, now we're just gonna keep doing that. But here's the trick. I'm gonna make sure that my light purple is always on the same side of the petal, okay? So that, let me show you what that means. So when I pick up my light, lots of color, lots of water, I'm gonna do this side again, right? Remember, if your color is not dark enough that it doesn't, if it's not as dark as you want it, pick up some more color. If it's too dark, pick up some more water. All right, so now I'm gonna blend these together. Just simply, you don't have to worry about being too neat because we get to blend these colors. I'm gonna wipe my brush off and get just some clean water again and just blend those two together. It's just a quick, easy trick to do that. All right, we're going to keep going. Um, I like to move my piece of art around, okay? If it is much easier. Some people like to tape their watercolors down, um, which I understand because it keeps your paper in one spot, but it prevents... Oops, I picked up the wrong color, you guys. I'm going to wipe that off and pick up some light. Um, but I like to be able to move my paper around so I don't usually tape it down. All right. Now I'm gonna wipe off your color before you go into your water. This is gonna keep your your paint, your water clean to paint with. Oh, I picked up some both of that and that's okay. All right, so if you can see on your paper, if you have really, really thick paper, you're gonna notice that your water kind of sits on top of it. Um, and I love that. So you can, I'm gonna pick up some clean water here and I'm gonna push this paint around and just kind of Wash that and make it a little more blended so you can't see that sharp line. I'm liking it so far, guys. We're gonna keep going. Some of you might want to actually make like a rainbow flower. Um, I think that would be super fun if you wanted to do that. I'm gonna stick with the purples. I like the different tones. And you see how when I move my brush over here, because I have color on my brush, it's not making a soft edge, it's making a harsh line. So I'm gonna wipe my brush off, pick up some clean water and soften that line. Just like that. How are we doing? Any questions so far, Bailey, over there? Not yet. No. But Anybody I should say hi to? You can tell Leslie hi. Well, hi, Leslie. <laughs> How are you? I hope you're having fun painting today. I'm going to pick up a little more of this light one. I made that last petal really dark, so I think I'm going to do this one really light and just add a little bit of dark. Wipe that off and pick up some clean water. So, um, a lot of times with watercolors, I notice that people have a hard time getting enough, they, they never quite put enough water on your brush. And usually if somebody in my class is having problems with watercolor, I'm going to tell them, get more water. So if you notice that, that you could see lines in that petal, you could see my brush strokes, and that's because I didn't have a lot of water in my brush. But now that I have water in my brush, all that water is gonna move that paint around like that. So usually, now, I say that, and some of you may have a too much water problem, and that's a whole different thing. So if you start to notice that while you're painting, that you're getting little pieces of paper rolling up on you, you probably have a little too much water, and you should probably let that paper dry before you paint anymore. But that rarely happens, I promise. Usually the problem is you need more water. Is Natalie with us today? No, no, we don't see her yet. Natalie knows what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. She's been watercoloring with me long enough to know that what Miss Jessica's, Miss Jessica's gonna say is put more water on your brush. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna keep going. And you notice as I keep turning, I'm still keeping that light color on the same side that I was painting the other ones, okay? And that's gonna really help give it some dimension. It's gonna look, make it look a lot more three-dimensional. 
than if you just painted one solid color. You could get really crazy and even add like a third tint in here. That would be beautiful. But for today, for this one, you guys stick with the two colors. And then you guys will realize what an easy project this is and you can keep making a bunch of flowers. So again, I'm coming in with some water. Oop, I got that really wet. Did you see my water fall off the side there? That's all right, it's just water. And we're gonna keep going. So, I was looking, so I was doing some research on Georgia O'Keeffe. Because again, when I think of flowers, I think of Georgia. Oops, I accidentally put my dirty water, my dirty brush in my clean water, you guys. <laughs> okay. But I found some interesting facts about Georgia that I want to share with you. So apparently, Georgia's favorite place to paint when she was in New Mexico was in her car. So she had a specially designed um, Ford Model A Ford. And her, her front seats would swivel. So she would get out and she'd turn her passenger seat, face it backwards to her um, to the back seat, and she'd use the back seat to hold up her canvas and she'd paint. <laughs> but it would protect her from the bees, is what she said, because there are a lot of bees in the desert. And not only that, but the, the heat and the sun coming down. And I just thought that was really interesting. How funny to learn something about that. I did something not like know that, that, right? Um, I didn't, I wouldn't even think about that, but mm -hmm. that's because I've never been to the desert to paint. Like, you have to worry about the bees out there. So now I'm going to pick up some more dark. And if you notice, the, if you, if your first color is still really wet and you were, you were able to get a lot of color, I mean, a lot of water on there, your, your water, your colors are going to start blending even without putting just clean water on it. But that depends on how fast you work, and it also depends on how thick your paper is. If you have watercolor paper, you're going to notice that your paper is going to stay wetter longer than the paper we're using. So the only really difference is, is you have to be a little more patient with watercolor paper. You've got to let your colors dry a little bit. Um, I think that's a light color, right? All right, there we go. almost forgot what color I picked up. Just talking in a painting. We are almost done with the petals. I love this project. It's so, it's so, it's so not stressful. That's the, that's the, mm -hmm. this is something that anybody can do. It's meditative. It is very meditative. It's very um, simple, but it's so much fun and you can get so much color and so, and just play around with this. Use your watercolors. Use them up, use your watercolors, you use up your paper, practice. Um, you could like use different colors. Maybe you could try blending opposite colors instead of colors that are friends that like each other right next to each other. Um, doing all kinds of experiments like that. I would love to see you guys do that. All right. I don't know, if I was an insect, I think I might be pretty happy about landing on this flower. <laughs> I'm gonna pick up a little clean water to blend that edge together. It's a little too harsh for me. But if you like that, that look, then stick with it. All right, one more petal left. Pick up that light color. Pick up some more, let's make, let's make this one really light. We didn't have enough water there. painting strangely I'm trying to make it so that you guys can see it and watch me paint at the same time oh did you see I kind of was a little sloppy over there uh oh got it a little rushed it got into my other petal but I'm gonna fix that in a second I'm gonna pick up some clean water and finish blending these together it's gonna work oh you see all that water I'm gonna just spread that water around evenly in my petal I'm gonna wash my brush off and just kind of run a rush over that. There, now you never even know I did that. All right, so we have the petals done. Now, because we used oil pastel or even crayon, crayon will do the same thing. We can, we don't have to wait for our picture to dry before we paint our background. 
if you didn't use oil pastel like we're going to do in the next film um, you need to make sure your petals are completely dry because if you don't your colors are going to bleed together so when they're wet they like to mingle like we just made all these mingle so but because of the oil pastel it kind of works as a, like a little levee and it keeps um, the water from touching each other so I'm gonna pick a color I'm gonna go ahead with green for my background now if you want to get really creative and do something if you have lots of background space and you want to draw like a picture or another flower or the bush that the flower is on something like that you can but I'm simply gonna paint my background green I don't have much background here my petals were nice and big today even draw a little bee you could totally put oh somebody put an insect on their flower i want to see <laughs> it now if you're going to draw on top of your picture you can absolutely you can use pencil on top of watercolor um you can use oil pastel on top of watercolor crayon but you'll just want your colors to dry you want your paper to dry first did you see i did that again you guys where's this jessica's rag miss bailey can you throw me that rag i got green into my petal but it's watercolor, so I'm gonna try and pick it up a little. It's not. That's all right. We're just gonna go with it. I'm gonna clean my brush really well, get some clean water, and try to blend that out. There you go. It's one of the reasons I love watercolors, especially with this age group, you guys, um, because it really is more forgiving than you think. If you make a mistake like that, just pick up some clean water and try to get it off. Let's see, I've got a couple more little places. I made little, little tiny spots for my background. Oh, I don't have enough color on that brush. I feel like a baby little bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> right up in there. I love the bumblebee. We'll have to do a bumblebee project someday. Oh, I would love that. So next week, Bailey, what's our, what's our spotlight piece for next week? called the clam diggers oh the clam diggers that's one of my favorites so, oh, so we're gonna big, be doing an oceany themed next week very cool i'm gonna darken this a little bit just because my other side got a little dark all right so now what's left is the center of our um flower right here so this flower i want to show you i did mostly just yellow i just painted it bright yellow is beautiful and i do really love it but these, I want you to see, I used more than one color, and I'm gonna show you. I picked a, several different oranges and browns to use, and it kind of gave it some more interest, but it's totally up to you. So I'm gonna wash my brush off really well, because I just used, oh, I just used some dark colors. I'm gonna actually wipe it down, make sure there's no color. Pick up some clean water, and I'm gonna wake up my oranges and my yellows down here. I'm gonna wake up this yellow. Hello, yellow. I'm actually gonna wake up this orange too. I kind of like the look of that. I'll see what it looks like with this. And let's see, one more yellow. We'll put, wake this one up. All right, so now my colors are awake. And now it's time. It's time to paint the section. So I'm gonna start with my medium yellow right here. And I'm just gonna paint right over my oil pastel. Now, if you're having some problems and you can't quite see your crayon or your oil pastel through your paint, add more water, guys. All right, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this orange now. Ooh, that's interesting. Ooh, and maybe now go over to the bright, bright yellow. And it's just a different tone, a different look, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna kind of swirl the colors around. And see, so now it's not so flat. It's got a lot of, but if you can look really closely, you can kind of see some, oh, that's, oil pastel. So once this dries, I'll brush right off. All right. And there we go. There you have it. Now, if you want to go back over and redo your lines, you can absolutely do that. You can see that I didn't push too hard. So I have some white sections right there. But if you wanted to go back, you want to cover all the white on your paper, you could just easily go back and recolor that in. But again, you'll want to wait till your paper is nice and dry. So there we have it. There is our close up view of a flower. I hope you, got, you little artists had a great time with me today. Thank you for joining us. Real quick before we go, do we have anything? Um, um, 
supposed to start? I'm sorry. Oh, a question of the week. So, okay. Oh, I love it. We're going to start doing a question of the week. Um, this week's question. If you could be really big or really small, which would you choose and why? <gasps> I love that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and answer that question. I think that I would want to be really small. And... I think that's because I've always been really fascinated with fairies and I kind of want to know how fairies see the world and I almost feel like they kind of see it like this with everything I was all big and beautiful. So that's my answer. But I really would love to hear what if you would rather be really small or really big and then you tell us why. Bailey, what about you? If you had to, if you had to pick one, what would you pick? Hmm. I would think I would want to be really big. Oh, okay. Yes. Just to, I think being small would be hard to reach things. Oh, okay, okay, true. But if you're really big, you could just like step over buildings and yeah, get out of your way. I could be careful. I can tiptoe. So like I could go just walk to an island or something if I want to go on vacation. I oh. step right over the ocean. That's a great reason. All right. <laughs> what about you, Miss Tisha? Hiding over here quiet. <laughs> I think I would choose the same as you, Miss Jessica. I would want to be really mm -hmm. small. When I was young, they had a movie called Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Oh, I love that movie. <laughs> and I loved yeah. that movie, and I always wanted to kind of know what it would be like. To ride an ant? To ride an ant. I remember <laughs> that scene, yes. You know, sleep in a flower or ride in an acorn down around a around puddle or something. Cool. I thought that would be really, really fun. That's always sparked my imagination. All so. right, all right. So awesome. If you guys could answer that for us, we'd love to hear your answers and share them with you. Um, let's do one more thank you to our sponsors, Mr. Richard Boister, um, Home Bank, Safe Haven, Bubba Ostelet. Thank you so much for all of your support when you can support them so they can continue to support us. Um, and we can't wait to see you meet us here again at two o'clock for our older kids class. We're going to be doing the same project, just a little more, um, advanced. So we'll see you then. Okay. Everybody have a great creative day. Bye. Bye.